In this project, we will investigate the aerodynamics of a golf ball using ANSYS Fluent software. A golf ball moving through air experiences two major aerodynamic forces, lift and drag. Dimpled balls fly farther than non-dimpled balls due to the combination of these two effects. First, the dimples on the surface of a golf ball cause the boundary layer on the upstream side of the ball to transition from laminar to turbulent. The turbulent boundary layer is able to remain attached to the surface of the ball much longer than a laminar boundary, and so creates a narrower, low pressure wake and hence less pressure drag. The reduction in pressure drag causes the ball to travel farther. Now in this project, we are going to simulate the airflow passing over the surface of a dimpled golf ball, and we will calculate the drag force applied on it. The geometry of the present project is designed in ANSYS Designmiller software and contains of a dimpled golf ball. Also, the meshing of the present project is done in ANSYS meshing software and the mesh type is unstructured. Also, the element number is equal to 1,587,721. Now, the first step for you to start the simulation is to click on a fluid flow block and then drag it over a blank space in ANSYS Workbench software. Next, right click on mesh and then go over import mesh file. Then click on Browse and then select the mesh file that is sent to you with the rest of the files. Under the General Setup tab, you can see different buttons from scales to units. By clicking on the scale, a new window will appear showing you the dominant extents of your geometry. Also, under the View Length Unit section, you can see the default geometry units, which is meter in this project. Also, under the scaling section, uh, under the mesh was created in, you can change the settings uh, in order to activate the scaling factors beneath that. For example, your geometry and mesh was is designed in a software which uh, its default unit was millimeters. By activating these scaling factors, you can change this factor to your desired factors in order to set the length to the appropriate unit. By clicking on check button, uh, you will see that under the console tab, the Fluid software will start to check your mesh for any errors. Uh, also by clicking on report quality, again in the console tab, the Fluid software will, uh, will give you the quality report for your mesh. For example, you can see the maximum aspect ratio of your mesh, uh, maximum orthogonal quality, and etc. By clicking on display button, a new window will appear which you can see different part, parts of your geometry. Now in the appear window which shows you the names of the different parts of your geometry, you can click and select each part and then click on display uh, so that the software will show you that part. Now there are several assumptions taken into account for this project. First, the type of our solver is selected to be pressure based since you are dealing with incompressible flows. Second, we have selected absolute formulation for velocity. And third, we have selected a steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. Next, if you double click on the viscous button, in the appeared window you can see we have selected realizable k epsilon model to solve for our turbulent fluid equation since this model is more accurate than the standard form. Now if you double click on the boundary conditions button, in the middle part of the software window, if you click on inlet boundary, you can see the type of this boundary is defined as velocity inlet. By clicking on edit button, you can adjust the settings related to this boundary. Now in the appeared window, in front of the velocity magnitude, you can see we have entered the value of 94 meters per second. Also in front of the coordinate system, you can see we've changed it to Cartesian, and we have set the x component of flow direction equal to 1, meaning that our airflow will enter our computational domain only in x direction. Now if you click on the outlet boundary, you can see the type of this boundary is defined as pressure outlet. Again, by clicking on edit button, you can change the settings related to this boundary. 
In the appeared window, the most important point you should pay attention to is the gauge pressure, which has the value of zero Pascal, meaning that our airflow will exit our computational domain to the atmosphere. And finally, if you click on Wall Boundary and then click on Edit button, in the appeared window, we can see a stationary wall motion along with no slipshore condition are defined. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the spatial discretization methods are shown in this window. Also, you can change the discretization into other formats, like you can change them into first order oven and the other options available for each variable under their combo list. And for the simple pressure velocity coupling, uh, the simple algorithm is kind of an iterative solver, which uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. After double clicking on the controls button, in the middle section of the software window, you can see that new part will appear. In the appear part, you can see under relaxation factors for different parameters. Now these values are set here by the software automatically. You can change these values, which are between 0 and 1, by yourself for different projects you do. But it is highly recommended that you do not do that, since it may result in divergence. There are two ways to check that your simulation process have reached convergence or not. Alongside checking the residuals reaching and nearing zero, you may define an arbitrary report or arbitrary boundary in order to calculate different parameters like pressure, velocity, temperature, and see whether they reach a constant value or not. If yes, it may be a sign that your simulation process have reached convergence. However, you must check the residuals as well. To create such report, you can simply right-click on Report Definitions, go over New, and select one of the options available based on your simulation. For example, in this project, if you expand Report Definition section, you can see a report is defined to calculate the drag force applied on the golf ball. After you double-click on that report, in the appeared window, you can see under the Report Output type, Drag Force is selected, and this drag force is calculated over the surface of the golf ball. Also under the force vector section you can see we have set the value of x equal to 1 while we set the values of y and z equal to 0 which means that only the drag force in the x direction will be calculated. After double clicking on the residuals button a new window will appear. In the appear window you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity and so on. Now when you set the software to start the simulation there would be error between each iteration. Now if that error is less than these criterion uh, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence. After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear showing you different methods of initialization, hybrid and standard. Now in the standard initialization method, you get to choose the first amounts and values for the first iteration of the simulation progress. These values refer to the values used in the first iteration of the simulation progress and if you choose the values for each parameter wisely, your simulation progress will finish sooner. It should be mentioned that you can also choose the first values and in, or the initial values by just clicking on the compute from drop down list and clicking on one boundary. For example, by clicking on compute from all zones, the software will automatically average the values in different zones and boundaries and put those values in the initial values for the software. After the process of initialization, we double click on the Run Calculations button and in the appeared part under the parameter section, we enter the value of number of iteration as you can see in this slide and then click on Calculate button. Now in order to create 2D contour, we first have to define a plane. To do that, right click on Surfaces, go over New and then select ISO Surfaces. 
the appeared window under the surface of constant select mesh and then underneath it select Z coordinate and then click on create button. Now the next step to extract 2D contours is to expand the graphics section, go over contours, right click on it and then select new. In the appeared window under the contours of section you can select your desired variable. For example in this slide you can see we have selected pressure. Also under the surfaces section you can select the surface you want to see your contours on. For example we are going to select our generated plane along with the surface of our golf ball and then click on apply button. Now in this slide you can see the pressure distribution over our generated plane which is placed in the middle section of our computational domain and over the surface of our golf ball. Also you can simply extract another contour by just changing the contours of section from pressure for example to velocity and then by simply clicking on the apply button. Now in this slide you can see the velocity distribution inside our computational domain over our generator plane. Also you can see here that the wake region is generated behind the ball which causes the air velocity to drop drastically. And finally to extract the path lines of the airflow, just like the previous steps, simply right click on path lines and then select new. In the appeared window, all you have to do is to select the surfaces you want your path line to be released from. For example, we are going to select the surface of the golf ball and the inlet boundary, and then click on Save or Display button. And finally, in this slide, you can clearly see the streamlines and path lines of the airflow passing over the surface of our golf ball. Also, as was previously mentioned, you can see the wake region that is generated behind the surface of the golf ball. The results show that the roughness of the sphere and the depressions or dimple on the golf ball at relatively high Reynolds numbers increase the momentum on the surface and the turbulence in the boundary layer and delay the flow separation, which reduces the drag force. But at low Reynolds numbers in layered flow, the flow separates from the surface and the drag coefficients for both smooth balls and golf balls with dimple are very close to each other. Finally, a summary of different settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented to you in the slide. To benefit from Mr. CFD services including simulation, consultation and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.